What's up you guys? My name is Zidana for those of you who don't already know me and I make weekly videos on YouTube that chronicle my experience thus far through PA school. So if you haven't already done so, go on over to my YouTube channel at Adana the PA and subscribe. And you can also follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA. So I'm really excited you guys about this particular video. So this is part of my true life series. Um, if you have not seen it, I have a whole playlist on YouTube of different true life series so be sure to check that out but this will be another installment and it's one that I'm pretty pretty like really excited about and really excited to be a part of and to hear and learn and listen because this is the true life I'm an ER doc I know that there are many people who are kind of teeter or tottering between should I become a physician a PA an NP an OT a PT um, you know the various different areas of healthcare that you can go into and this will just afford you the opportunity to just get a little bit more insight. So Dr. McLennan, who is going to be speaking in this particular documentary, will just give you some more information on what his experience has been thus far as an ER doc. So without further ado, here is Dr. McLennan. Hi, I'm Dr. McLennan. I'm an emergency medicine physician, and this is my true life. <laughs> Typical kind of day on the job, more or less. Um, you know, I, I get to the hospital, uh, go through whatever entrance, uh, usually not the ambulance entrance, but uh, get get on inside. I, I meet up uh, with a scribe often, um, at least at the, the larger hospital I work at, who's somebody who helps me out with my charting, um, helps me stay stay more efficient. We find ourselves a couple computers um, and really start hitting the ground running. Um, long into the system, see what patients have, have been there the longest or who looks the sickest, and and we sign up for one, two, three at a time, and and then uh, just start start running around and and trying to, to see as many as we can. Um, basically, we'll go in, we'll see a patient, I'll do my, my history, my physical, um, typical kind of things, get an idea of what's going on. Um, then in my head, I'm, I'm running through my differential for each patient, trying to sort out, well, what could this be? What test do I need to order? What labs? What imaging? Um, and uh, when I step out of the out of the room, I go ahead and and put those orders in the computer. And uh, meanwhile, while the, the nurses are working on lab work or the, the X-ray techs are getting imaging or or whatnot, then then I'm already off seeing another patient. And so um, each patient, I'm in there for for a few minutes, and then um, can see quite a few patients. You know five, six sometimes in the first hour, hour and a half. And, and then you start getting things coming back and uh, kind of slows the pace of seeing new patients, but at the same time you're, you're seeing how patients are responding to any medicines that you put in. You're, you're following up on the lab results, seeing, you know, with this test, do I think I need to go ahead and move forward, get a CT scan, or, or if you've already gotten that, what are the results showing? Did that patient with the belly pain, did they end up having appendicitis? Do I need to call a surgeon? Do I need to work on getting them admitted to the operating room? or? Or is everything look okay? They're feeling great now and, and uh, ready to go home and follow up with their primary care doctor. And, and so that constant uh, cycle of, of picking up patients, getting things ordered, and then uh, really the harder part of the job, getting that information back and sorting out, well, what do I do next with the patient? Um, whether that's admission or, or sending home or, or whatever it may be, or sometimes just ordering ordering more tests to, to help clarify things. The larger hospital I work at uh, is kind of a, a more of a referral center um, and a, a, bigger center itself, there's always patients to see, so there's there's never a, a, a spare moment. You're, you're on your feet, you're going the whole time. Those are 10-hour shifts. Um, usually by the the eight-hour mark, more or less, I'm starting to, to wrap up um, seeing patients and, and more trying to follow up results, get patients uh, uh, dispo, um, and then catching up on my, my charting that I had been neglecting largely throughout the, the throughout the shift. Uh, the smaller hospital I work at is 12-hour shifts don't have a scribe there and, and you don't really have that option of slowing down towards the end of the shift because there's no other physician to see those patients. So um, you're, you're seeing folks all the way up, up to the end. Uh, and hopefully more or less you're, you're getting done around on time. Often it's, it's not unusual to be there late half hour, hour or so. And um, I try not to, to bring the, the charting home. So I just knock it all out there. And then when I'm done, drive home and rest up, get ready for the next day.
So working with the the, the PAs, um, it's it's different at the two places I work at. Um, the bigger hospital, the the PAs are out front. Um, they're they're working kind of in an urgent care type situation or a fast track, um, whatever you want to call it. And and essentially they're they're seeing some of the lower acuity stuff. They're they're seeing the wrist sprains, the ankle sprains, the the lacerations, the abscess. Uh, you know those uh, flu-like symptoms, um, stuff that can come in can get out pretty quickly and, and really just they're, they're chugging through those, those patients and, uh, and getting, getting patients moved quickly um, as, as opposed to where I'm usually at in the, in the main part of the emergency department, kind of where patients can, can linger a little bit more where they need to wait on MRIs or CT scans or whatnot. Uh, yeah, every once in a while, certainly a, a patient can get mistriaged or, or get sent to the, the fast track center. So uh, we rely on our PAs a lot to, to certainly um, help kind of sort those out as well and, and get those patients uh, triaged appropriately. And unfortunately, in, in that situation, I don't have as close of a working relationship with them unless I'm doing what's called a provider triage shift there where I'm actually out front. They're not in the same room as them. Um, and that's when I've got kind of the dedicated role of working with the, the PAs, but also triaging patients to the, the fast track or getting them back to the main part of the emergency department. Um, and that's really where I get to spend most of my time with the PAs. We'll, we'll bounce ideas off of each other, see what we think is appropriate for this patient, what do we need to order, um, and what do we need to do moving forward. Uh, but where I really get to work with the PAs closely is, is more at the smaller hospital I work at. It's a, a place where I, I work just nights out there, so I get to work with the PAs for, for two, two and a half hours or so um, as they're finishing up their shift. Um, and it's 12-hour overnight shifts in a small place where I'm you know, once, once they're gone, I'm the only, uh, only provider there, uh, except for an internal medicine doctor who's kind of managing the patients uh, upstairs on the floor. Uh, but it's, uh, it's really the, the option that I get to, to work closely with the PAs. We're, we're in one room together, we're side by side on two separate computers, and we're picking up patients and, and uh, bouncing ideas off each other. I'm learning from them, they're learning from me, and, and we're just uh, running through things and, and uh, really get to work closely with them there. And so that, that's a lot of fun. You really get to know them well, uh, both personally and just on a, a work relationship as well, seeing um, how things mesh and, and just uh, learning, learning the ropes and, and, and everything and, and uh, how the, the process works uh, with them, certainly in, in training. And I didn't get to work a whole lot with PAs. And, and so since being out two and a half years now, working closely with them has, has been a, a good experience and, and a learning one as, as well. So I went to uh, Loma Linda University for medical school and uh, Wake Forest uh, University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina for, for residency. Uh, in total, after college, I did four years of medical school and three years of residency. Uh, most ER programs are about three years. Uh, some are four years, but the majority are three. Uh, and so medical school, uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, wouldn't trade it for the world, but not something I'd want to go back and, and repeat by any means. Uh, the, the first couple of years, it's 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 the grind of, of just uh, day in, day out, being in the books. Uh, you don't feel like you've got any free time because any free time should be used for studying, really, because there's just an endless amount of information to try to take in. Um, after the first couple years, you, you take step one of boards and, and you start transitioning to more of a, a clinical experience. You start getting to those rotations in the various areas of, of the hospital. And that's really where I started to figure out what I wanted to do and, and that I wanted to be an emergency medicine doc. And, and that I wasn't so interested in some of these other other fields, and and that's uh, that was the more fun part of, of med school certainly. Um, I did a couple of way rotations. One was at Wake Forest. That's how I kind of got my foot in the door there, coming from California, um, and um, you know then I got back and then uh, started doing the interview trail. We do a, a match day in March where we all, as fourth year medical students, find out where we're going to spend the next three, four, five plus years of our life for, for residency. And that's when I matched to, to Wake Forest um, and finished up out in California. Made the road trip across with my, my new wife and uh, we, we uh, went, uh, went to Wake Forest where we spent the next three years. Um, honestly, I, I try to think about how much did I really know about it before starting up with medical school? And, and I don't think I really knew much about um, the opportunity of being a, being a PA before starting out. My, my father's an, uh, a physician, my older brother is as well. It, it seemed like a pretty natural route for me. I was interested in, in medicine and the sciences and that kind of a thing. So it's, it always, in, in, in my mind, at least for 
as long as I can remember, seemed like uh, the route that, that I was going to be taking, not by any pressure necessarily for my parents or brother, but just that's what I was interested in, that, uh, that's what I knew about. Um, I really started learning more about PAs and kind of their involvement with things uh, in, in medical school and, and probably more so third and fourth year when I started getting out on the, the clinical rotations and I started meeting some friends that were, were in the PA school and uh, there at Loma Linda and just kind of trying to find out more of, of what they did. Uh, so it's hard to kind of think retroactively, would I have been more interested in, in PA versus medicine or, or would, would I have done differently? Um, and it's tough. I think there's some awesome advantages of, of PA. One, one thing certainly that stands out to me, one of many, is, is the fact that um, it's a little more flexible as far as what you can do. You know, if you do a certain area for a while and, and you know, if you get some burnout or just want to change, you, you had that opportunity of kind of transitioning into another area, uh, whereas that, that's not really there for, for a physician who, had, you know, did this, this residency training for, for a prolonged period of time. They can't, you know, suddenly go work in a dermatology clinic kind of a thing. Um, yeah, I think one of the tough parts um, that that's got to be tricky for for a lot of PAs is is um, the autonomy. I mean, there is there are, are situations where you can get a lot of autonomy, which I, I think is great, certainly for those that want it and, and for those that are strong. But even then, it often takes some work in finding that right job or, or certainly earning that autonomy. Um, and so, if you want, you know, a lot of autonomy, then then it seems like the the physician route was a, a, a uh, easier decision as far as going going that way. Um, again, not that you can't get it by being a PA, but but certainly there's there's nobody else to answer for. There's nobody else peering over your chart or asking you to do things this way or, or that way. Um, which I know as a resident that was kind of getting tough as I became stronger and stronger as a resident. Having an attending, having work up patients that I didn't necessarily want to do a certain way can can be a, a tricky road to walk. Um, you know. You, always want to do the right thing for the for the patient um, and and sometimes physicians for for better or worse depending on who you're working with uh, may have a different idea of how how best to do that so uh, that, that can be a tricky position that, that PAs get in and, and I try to respect that when I'm working with the, the PAs as well try to be hands-off best I can but at the same time working together and and uh, uh, trying to learn from each other No attending, no backup that first day. Uh, scary. Uh, probably is scary just driving to the hospital that day, leaving home and, and driving in and getting out of my car thinking, what in the world am I getting myself into? I've got no backup. I've got no attending looking over me. I don't know any of these other doctors here or these nurses or any of the staff. Um, fortunately, you know, my, my job is a, a very welcoming, fostering environment, at least at, at, at my hospital, and and so I didn't have the, the demand of seeing high numbers of patients the, the first day, and half the battle was just trying to figure out the, the computer system, and I'd like to think of myself as somewhat techno technologically savvy, um, but even then it's just a, a battle to figure all that out, but shoot, every patient you're, you're thinking so deeply about, is that the right dose of Tylenol? Is that the right dose of Motrin? I had a baby that was constipated and I was trying to think all the different things to make sure that I wasn't missing in this simply just constipated baby. And you're just really, really scared that, that first day, that first week. I mean, I'd, I'd be lying if I said I didn't have any apprehension even now going into shifts two and a half years after residency, five and a half years after med school. Um, you never know what's going to gonna walk in. And um, you know, my, my first day is just a lot of, lot of questioning. Um, as far as each and every thing that you do, each and every order that you, you make. You know, a, a separate first day event was the first day at the smaller hospital I work at. The, the larger hospital at least had other, other physicians I could turn to that could kind of help me. And, and there's actually a physician who was working with me that day to help train me into the system, not train me medical-wise, but just help me with the computer system. And so I at least had him to kind of bounce ideas off if I really was struggling with something. Uh, but then I... Uh, I went to the smaller hospital for the first time a, a few months later, and that there's just not many in resources at all. Um, so of course, about 15 minutes after walking in um, on the new job there, uh, it was even before the, the PA got there, so it was, it was truly just me as a provider. Once you know it, a, a lady 38, 39 weeks pregnant comes rolling in in labor, and here we're delivering a baby just within minutes of me starting out my first, first shift out there. and. Fortunately, no, no issues, no 
significant bleeding. Uh, baby came out nicely, was healthy, and we got an ambulance to take them over to a more appropriate facility. Um, but uh, it uh, jumping in quick, uh, and uh, it's it's a nerve wracking uh, nerve wracking experience uh, jumping into to something like that your first day at a small hospital, but. Uh, since then you just start getting get more and more used to, to all the chaos that comes in the emergency room. There, there's so many experiences throughout working in the in the ER that that change the way that that you look at life, that uh, affect your life, and um, how you how you see things. Um, in general, we all take take life for for granted. Um, those of us that have been been healthy and and haven't had to spend time in, in hospitals and emergency rooms and, and whatnot uh, throughout our lives really take for granted the, the health that we have. Granted, certainly so much of what we see see these days is, you can say, is self-inflicted from bad eating, smoking, not exercising, but, but there's plenty of patients that by nothing they did wrong ended up getting a, a bad hand dealt to them. I will always remember um, the first time that I was doing compressions on a, on a kid, um, doing CPR on a kid. Um, and that was when I was still still a, a medical student actually doing my uh, away rotation at, at Wake Forest where I ended up doing my residency later on. But I remember I was, I was doing compressions right next to, to the mother who had come into the room and, and the, the physician tells, tells me to stop doing compressions at we were calling the code, and I've got this bawling mother next to me. And talk about an emotional roller coaster, and um, you know it's it's terrifying the things that we see, and it, it impacts you quite a bit. Um, and and just uh, you know after any experience like that, you go home, you you hug your family, you hug hug, hug your wife, hug your kids, and just uh, try not to take for for granted all all that uh, that you are blessed with 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 each each day of life. I mean there are. Um, just so many experiences throughout any any field of, of medicine, but I think especially with with emergency medicine that uh, you you know you go to the ER and it starts getting repetitive for you. This is your job. This is your office. It's what you're used to. It is a comfortable environment to some extent when you're used to working there. But for the people that come in, it's the worst day of their life often. And I think it's always important to remember that when you're when you're dealing with with patients. Um, don't don't forget uh, their perspective of, of things, and um, you know I don't, I don't know uh, how many of you watching are, are Christian. I, I am, and I've gotten an opportunity to pray with some patients, uh, and I know that's been something that's hit home with me a lot, and um, that that patients and their families have have really really appreciated, um, and you know you have a you have an amazing opportunity to be, be there for somebody, whether you're a Christian or, or, or not, but that opportunity to be, be there for somebody, to help hold their hand, to, to pray with them, to guide them, to, to teach them or instruct them as far as what's, what's going on and, and to, to help them through this emotional roller coaster that they're going through, um, you know, on this, this worst day of their, their life is, is uh, a humbling uh, yet incredible opportunity that we, we shouldn't take lightly by any means. Uh, so work work life balance. Uh, I feel pretty fortunate in that emergency medicine really allows you to have a good work life balance. Uh, I don't carry a pager on me, not one in my house, in my car. Never do I wear a pager, and never do I want to. Um, that was one of the nice things about going into emergency medicine is when I go to work, I work hard. I'm running. I'm on my feet all day long. You know, I might take a break to throw down a granola bar or something, but for the most part, I'm just working my tail off, but when I go home, I'm, I'm done. I'm being with my family, being with my wife and kids, and uh, not worrying about, uh, about hospital work or worrying that my pager might go off and I have to go in. Now, certainly, I'm doing shift work. I have to work my, my share of holidays, weekends, and over, overnight shifts, but uh, you know, full-time can be 12, 13, 14 shifts, depending on how, how long your shifts are, and uh, that provides a, a good amount of time the rest of the month to, to be with the family. I'd, I'd rather be, be with family uh, more than the hospital any day, no matter how much I, I love my job. In medical school, I, I really tried to do my research to get a good idea of what I was getting myself into, uh, although it's always hard to know 
exactly what it's going to be like when you're when you're on the other side of things. Um, by nature, I'm not a super confrontational person, um, but in the ER, sometimes you just have to have to be able to, to be that sometimes. Unfortunately, we have the opioid epidemic. You have patients that are, are drug seeking or there for, for secondary gain of, of whatever it may be. And, and um, it can put you in some, some tricky situations. I've had patients paint their bodies red to make it look like they had infections or, or septic joints to, to get pain medicine. I've had patients intentionally harm themselves. And, and that can always be uh, a very difficult thing to deal with um, when you have to, to battle being uh, appropriately nice to patients and taking care of what their true underlying illness may be, but at the same time um, dealing with, with some of the very difficult personalities that, that come across in the, in the ER um, because um, you will see a whole lot of different kind of people that, that come in, into the ER. Um, it is a wide range of interesting, interesting personalities. That being said, um, one of the sweet things about the ER is it doesn't matter who you are, we're not going to turn you away. Um, you know, that's um, one of the, uh, the beauties of emergency medicine, we're the, the safety net for, for the society. I mean, uh, at, certainly at this point with where healthcare is, uh, any private office can turn a patient away because of lack of insurance or lack of funds, but um, we're, we're going to see everybody, we're going to take care of everybody, and uh, it's, a, it's a privilege, not a burden, is really how you have to see it. Uh, final thoughts about working in the working in the ER. Um, you know, PA or a physician, be the be the best you, you can. Um, I mean, there's there's a, a stark difference between uh, the PA who stays up on the literature, who who listens to podcasts, who who really knows his or her stuff, and the one who is is there put in their time and, and, and get their paycheck and is going to see the, the minimum amount of patients that they can. It's so much fun when you're working with somebody, uh, again, PA or physician, who who is, is knowledgeable, fun to work with, and um, works their tail off just like you should be working your tail off, um, and, and seeing patients together, doing the grind together. Um, you know, when I get these sick patients at the smaller hospital and I'm working hand in hand with the, the PA out there who you know, took the time to learn how to do ultrasound, to, to do a, a fast exam on a trauma patient to see if there's, you know, any bleeding in the abdomen or who can look for a pneumothorax with the ultrasound um, and not have to wait on chest x-ray while I'm, you know, working on intubating the patient. Doing these things is, it, it makes the job fun, enjoyable, but it does take work to, to get to that, that point. You know, with that comes more autonomy, more, um, more of an opportunity to, to do things on your own without uh, somebody overshadowing you and questioning every every decision decision that you make. But uh, put, up, put up the time on the, the front end, keep up strong work ethic, uh, no matter, again, PA, physician, uh, work hard, do your very best. Um, then when you're done with the shift, go home, be with your family, and enjoy not being in the chaos that's the ER. Well, that was it, you guys. Um, I'm, I had an amazing time with Dr. McLennan just talking about healthcare and then also the whole physician PA relationship and how important it is to actually like be on one accord as a PA and a physician or a PA and you're attending um, in the hospital when you're working because that is like, it's literally life or death. So I wanna say a great, great thank you so much to Dr. McLennan for taking the time out to talk to me about about it and to also make this documentary for you all to just give you all a whole lot more insight on what it means to be an ER physician. Um, I hope you guys really, really enjoyed this and I hope you guys got a lot more information than you had before. I know I learned uh, a ton. I did not realize how much flexibility, I guess you could say, 
you could have as a physician, um, more specifically an ER physician or a physician that has a more shift life with respect to their work. Um, so that was interesting to me. Um, I don't think it would have changed my decision to become a PA at all uh, with respect to going to med school or going to PA school, but it is very, very important to make sure that you have all the possible information that you can get to make the most informed decision. And you know, I always tell you all that. So definitely really, really appreciated him and his insight that he brought. Um, if you guys have anything else that you may want to see uh, with respect to my True Life series, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. Um, I love getting you guys' feedback, so definitely please go ahead and do that. And um, if you haven't done this already, go ahead right now and subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really love doing this for you all. So stay engaging with me, stay talking to me, and um, we'll continue on this journey together. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye! I never really um, understood that aspect in terms of being a physician and being able to spend as much time home with your family. That's why I chose the PA route. Mm -hmm. So that's really interesting to hear that you're able to have a stretch of week, like the week that you're mm -hmm. working a lot, but yet still have a whole lot of time for the rest of the month to be with family. There's not a whole lot in medicine that's pure shift work, mm -hmm. um, whereas emergency medicine is, and it, it gives you more of that, that flexibility. There's, okay. there's a couple other options out there, but um, not to be against surgeons, but a surgeon is often on a pager and they've got to work longer hours usually. And I, I think that although it's very possible to get that, that nice work, family, life balance, yeah. I think uh, it's just a, a little bit more natural, a little easier for that to, to happen when uh, you're in a, a shift work kind of environment, which, which the ER is. Okay. And just like a quick break, for those of you who don't know what a nursemaid's elbow is, it is the dislocation of that elbow. So I'm like really, really like excited and geeked out a little because I just learned about that last semester in my ortho module. So I really, I was like, ah, I know what that is. So just a little heads up, you guys. That's what you'll learn, you know, when you're in PA school and med school and um, I guess NP school as well. Right. So You think you're so cool right now. Because <laughs> I'm like, so oh my gosh, I know what that is. Yeah. Like it's good because then you know things get to actually make sense like yeah. when you get to recognize things and the fact that I know and it's coming from a physician <laughs> I feel really good oh, so. yeah. <laughs> Daddy,